Mercenary here. Uh, don't be confused. This guy hasn't joined IM. He's just a Star Tail player who's partnered with the team. He's only played one time in Pro League, and he lost. And I hope that's not the, the only reason they put him as a downward arrow there. Yeah, I, I would hope so as well. But that's a pretty harsh downward arrow we're getting here for Curious. We need that southeast arrow. When is it going to come? What color is it going to be? No one knows. No one knows, man. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's going to be like pink. It's going to be pink or like orange or something. Well, here's Kira. Five and five, one and three versus Zerg. And what you were saying about the map, uh, Terran is ahead, uh, eight to four over Zerg. Yeah. So you do have that stat down. So I, I, I'm a bit surprised we see Curious here. Maybe he was expecting to hit a Protoss, but do you see a lot of Protoss here as well? Yeah, I don't. I really don't like this this pick for Curious on the map because we just see so much Terran here and. That's, again, one of these reasons, um, you know, looking into this, I think a lot of players look, or a lot of the people who vote, the Korean commentators especially, oftentimes look at the players and their stats, but I look at condition, I look at the maps a lot, and this map, I'm feeling Cure. But if Curious takes this win, then I am is going to take a 3-1. If it's Cure, we're going to the ace match. So let's jump into Outboxer. SK Telecom. Up here in the top left, in the blue for Incredible Miracle, Mercenary here is is Curious. To the bottom right, in green, our second back-to-back uh, -back Jenner Terran. It's Cure. And uh, let's hope he can do a little bit better against Zerg than uh, his teammate did, Maru. You know, I really... I. I can't fault Maru for his decision to pull the barracks back early and not do a contain because he doesn't have the information that we have and it's actually the better build like for playing late game, playing macro. Uh, something that Maru probably thought reasonably so that he could take against a Zerg player who ended up being on one base. But those lings were a problem. His command center was late. His, his timings were a bit off. His Hellion uh, harassment didn't do a whole lot. There was that one Baneling hit that hit like all of his Hellions didn't yeah. kill any of them, but it damaged them all, and he just kept attacking without repairing, because if he just went home to repair, he would have missed his timing window. Everything went wrong around that time, and that's when he lost control of the game, in my opinion. And then that timing that, that Bjell hit was just too much. Yeah, we, we saw Bjell just being so, so calm the entire time, not, you know, overreacting in any stage of the game at all. He just handled it so, so well. And I'm going to hope that Curious does the same here on this map, keep that very, very calm, Zerg here. Fortunately for him, he's not going up against anything super crazy. No super aggressive moves here in the beginning. No proxies. Just your standard Reaper opening. Keeping it real. Keeping it real bull. He actually had a really fast uh, barracks, by the way, though. 11 barracks and 11 gas. So he's going to pop that Reaper out pretty darn quick. Pretty quick out there, that Reaper. Yeah, over there. Quick out on Outboxer. Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea why this map is called Outboxer? Because I'm 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 at a loss here, actually, to be honest. When you look at it, does does the word Outboxer come to mind? Do you look at this and think like, oh yeah, I totally get it? Because I'm really just I'm I don't know I'm not seeing it. I'm, I'm just I'm. Ah. The thing is, it's also Outboxer in Korean. Like it's yeah. Outboxer. So like I I don't. It's not like it's like some the bad Koreans translation. Kind of like well. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really not, uh, not really sure on that one. Yeah, I, I'm pretty stumped as well. I, tr I tried to think about it, didn't talk for a minute. I was like, hmm. And I'm like, this doesn't know. look like a map that, like, for example, Slayer's Boxer would particularly like, even necessarily. I'm just like trying to. I'm like, it's not even really that outside. It's not telling Boxer to get out either. There's no, no one would do that. There's no Little Mac from Punch Out. Like, I'm just, uh, I don't know. Well, he's look at this. He's going to actually get a Ling here, it looks like. The good micro by Curious, on the other hand. Yeah. Okay, Zerg's learning to, uh, to micro this very, very well, as you have to, because this Reaper is so, so common. But unfortunately, losing two Lings, that's a little bit more than he would like to. 
This is actually something that I really like about Heart of the Swarm, is this is the way that the opening is in this matchup, because on Wings of Liberty, there would often be, like, actually nothing going on during this part of the game. But now that the Terran players have an opportunity to scout and do some damage, it costs them gas to do so, but it just really forces both players to be very attentive. Because this is not just the Zerg who has to be microing, the Terran has to be microing very well as well. So it just makes, it like puts the whole early game into like hard mode. It's like, okay, well you can't just sit back and actually hit all your buildings at home. You have to also, your microing is very expensive, fast units. And if you're the Zerg player, you're going to be microing your, your Lings and your drones because you have to make Lings, so you need to make those worth it, or that's even further drones that you're not using. Yeah, it, it makes the time of the game that's usually a bit slow to get everything started into more one that's very micro-oriented, very exciting, rather than just, you know, sitting back, getting your bases up. But nope. With that fast uh, gas, he gets a third Reaper. We're seeing this more and more often, usually with a Dream Bunker, but even in this case, I mean, he's done a lot of damage here. He killed that Tumor. And he's, you know, damaged those queens quite heavily as well. Yeah, and he's fallen up here with a tech lab coming up on that barracks as well as a starport. Now the starport did get scouted by the overlord, but he did not see the barracks going over there. He may have seen it in the air, which would explain why he doesn't see it on the ground there by the vision we just saw. Uh, so he may have an idea that the Banshees are coming. Well, it's really important for him to know it's a third base, though. So he knows that even though there are a lot of Reapers out, this isn't going to be like a deadly attack that comes in and kills his hatchery. Uh, one of those attacks that we were talking about with Moonblade on Sunday, um, about just how if you if you get a ton of Hellions out with the Reapers, when you go to three Reapers, it's sometimes hard to actually get that hatchery up, especially if Creep Tumors are denied, because it adds that extra DPS in. And if the Queens get too close to the hatchery, it means they have to be off Creep. Queen gets too far off creep and it can't retreat against this much damage. So we'll see if we can actually force a cancel here. This is one feature of Outboxer that I feel makes it a little bit Terran favored because the third base is so far away and it's it's pretty easily accessible for the Terran's harassment. You see this all the time on this map. Yeah, you're exactly right. He's going to continue doing it. It's, it's so effective on this map. He's even going to snipe a queen. It's off creep. The creep is not spread. He killed the tumor earlier this on. This is exactly what I was talking about. Queens get too far off creep. Kill the queens here. He's going to get two. And he might even just get this third one. No, the Zerglings come to self surround, but look at that. Nice little tight spot over here for Cure. Yep. Does end up losing a Reaper, but he kills all the links for it. And we'll get this Queen as well. It looks like gonna hit her last inject. Very sad sight to watch for a Zerg player. It looks like she might actually be saved, but still, more links being made here, which means that Cure has a very great Harvester count comparatively at home. Is actually, again, getting into that little nook here, yep. killing those links, and that Queen is very exposed. What are you doing? Curious, get that back. Don't forget about the Banshees that are coming across the map. We see as Curious does see the Banshee, he is making, you know, an Overseer here for the Cloak that he thinks is coming. Unfortunately for him, there's no Cloak on the way, but he is going to lose that third base. That yeah. is going to be so huge. That is going to be pretty painful. Okay, he's got these links here. Barely warding these Hellions off before the base is killed. The Banshee, I would say, uh, you know, without those Queens coming up now, could have just been hitting on that hatchery. But he has to pull it back, and it looks like the hatch will be saved, and we have Mech. Coming out here, I thought this was going to be more standard on this map as we were seeing players like TY and Flash use it on this map and Pro League consistently. Kind of fell out a little bit, but looks like we're seeing it again here. And I wonder if it's also a reaction to how much damage he's been able to get done because this puts the Zerg on the back foot a little bit. Gives him a lot of time to get his third base out safely. So many Hellions here, not what Curious is expecting. He's got only Lings. And uh, if he actually kills those queens, that's going to be game because the Banshee and the Hellions are going to kill the base. They've done way too much damage. Killed a ton of Harvesters, and he's killed Harvesters basically uh, by forcing Lings in a sense as well with all the Lings that came out here that did very little. So, uh, yeah, I think that's actually it. I mean, he's got such a great follow-up at home that Curious will not be able to punish. Uh, he should have targeted the hatchery though and actually the hatchery lives that's a does he have a banshee or anything i guess not i guess the hatchery is gonna live lives with 66 health somehow uh but he's got a third base coming up here whereas curious isn't even mining he's ahead in harvesters which is not a place you want to be in against a, t a turn here as the zerg he's gonna come over here with the zerglings and try to harass here at the third base or maybe just even go in the front no, he's got there, force a lift here probably there's enough know. hellions to deny this uh, he gets one kill on that SCV building, the refinery. Eight mutas on the way, two Thors are about to pop, and I'll laugh at them. Yeah. Just going for the Thors here before the, the Siege Tanks. He knows that mutas could be the only thing. Yeah, I think he's looking at this like, you know, if you had roaches earlier, you would have used them <laughs> against yeah. my Hellions. So 
probably taking the Mutalist back at home with all that extra gas. So and He's uh, going to guess right. I mean, oh. he's got turrets up here as well. Another run by comes in, but it's just so few in number. I feel like there's like one Zergling attacking the missile turret. Unfortunately, that one Zergling is going to get into the main base and is going to get the whole scout on. Yeah. Not much to see here that he didn't already expect with the mech and uh, the certain units he already saw. So, confirmation. Also lets him know about the turret. He's targeting down this refinery, actually. He gets one SUV, two SUVs, and it looks like he will get the refinery. Not quite. Gets the repair off this cure. This is going to force those Metalists back. Not doing much. Plus one's almost done for those Thors. Aliens as well. Roachhorn's so late here. Goes into double Evo, and he's got the Infestation Pit on the way, so he is getting ready for some Swarm Hosts. These Cloak Panties are actually going to keep the Mutalists away. Don't think they're going to accomplish a whole lot else, though, because the Overseer is ready. Splits into two directions, but it's a bit slow. And... Uh, Does lose the second one. He doesn't lose it. It doesn't die. I mean, they were on a mission. loses it. They were on a mission to kill that base. And that's the only way you can really snipe a base like this in uh, this matchup when you're going for mech, because you can't just do like a Marauder run by it as you would in a situation where you're going for bio. So that actually kind of hurts. As that was the plan with these Banshees for sure. It loses one, and now it's going to be a little bit less useful against the Swarm Hosts. I'm just so worried about this follow-up push. You, you do enough damage in the early game with your Hellions, and the Zerg player doesn't hold it off well enough. You just go up to this, what we said before, either max, or if you want to go a bit earlier, you just go 160, 170. If you have enough Thors, you have enough tanks in your composition to just go over there and kill the guy. There and are very few situations in StarCraft 2 where in a Terran versus Zerg, like the Zerg player has less supply and it's a good thing or it's okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I just feel that, you know, even though he's going to Swarmos, which are right, like the, the best unit uh, to try to go for when you're behind like this because they don't cost money to send their Locusts out. They're, they're units that are actually, you know, going to be the most cost efficient, arguably, but in a small number like this, not so much. Yeah, and they're way out here on the map. If Kira actually identifies this, he could definitely pick off some of those. Kira, he's going to have to move those back eventually. Bringing a bunch of SUVs with this push is Cure, and I like this idea because he's just going to be able to repair all of his units. Going for the mag, this is something you can do. Has a ton of those SUVs from before and the three uh, command centers, but here is a counterattack, but there's enough Hellbats here to defend this, I think. Yeah, this is a smart move to just rally these in here. Easy peasy, clean them up, line them up, and the Hellbats here at the front tanking enough damage, the Banshee helping out as well. The Raven's going to give detection, so he doesn't even have to scan to kill these tumors. He's also going to have that reveal on the Swarm Host. And it looks like Cure is going to come over here and end it and force us to that ace match. Yeah, we'll force them into an ace match because I'm not forced. I feel happy about it. We're up at basically maxed versus, you know, 153 right here for the Zerg. He's going to hold on for as long as possible, losing that third base that was so low from before. Scan goes down to the swarm host, and uh... I mean, just look at with the siege tank set up. He doesn't do a ton of damage with those. He does get some damage done. He does have a few more swarm hosts out. Let's see. Carefully pushing forward now. He's waiting actually to put that PDD down in the best location possible. A few more hellions coming from the other side. The swarm hosts need to be moved as the locusts run out, but he's losing all of his roaches here. He's putting off a pretty nice last stand, I have to say. But how long is it going to last, Brennan? I mean, he's he's running out of room real fast. Well, Curious is trying to do whatever he can. He's going to try to snipe a Thor over here, but he's actually losing the the Mutalists, so many Mutalists to those Thors. He is even up the supply here now, but um, so many of his units have gone down. Now he's cut off from his main base, so all those units, all those reinforcements that want to be rallied down are just dying here for free. And he's getting closer and closer, actually scanning and now targeting with those very high DPS units, this, the tanks in tank mode, those Thors just doing so much. The Mila's coming over here looking feeble against that Thor firepower. And once he pushes this last wave of Locusts away, I think that's going to be all she wrote here for this game, as those Swarmos have nowhere to run. They're like trying to go up into this base on the high ground. 
They're gonna run off the map soon enough here. They're gonna uh, desert Curious. <laughs> they're just gonna jump off the ledge. They're like, I've had enough. I've, I've taken way too much damage. I just don't want to make any more locusts. GG. GG. Here has done it. And he brings us to an ace match now. Making what seemed pretty dire, uh, what a, a pretty dire situation here for Jin Air uh, into a pretty decent one. It's gonna go to one match now to decide who is the winner in this matchup between the Incredible Miracle and Jin Air. Maru seems like the obvious pick, but I actually don't think we're gonna see him today as the last player, and I'm not really sure who's gonna take his place. And for I am, to be honest, I'm not. I'm not really sure either. This is this is one of the days where I look at the the players uh, for these teams, and I think to myself, like, there's no obvious answer here. Actually, uh, I'm really 